All right, what's up? Board Wrestling Live, we're here back again, and we have another amazing Florida wrestler in our room. Uh, she's been on way, way back when I first started, and uh, we got her on again. She's, um, if you don't know, she spent 16 years on the mat. Uh, she wrestled at King University. She was the first four-time girls Florida State champ, two-time world team member, Fargo national champ, outstanding wrestler, and a bunch of other shit. I couldn't write, sure. it, all, couldn't write it all on here, but uh, yeah, she's just a badass, and we have her on now. Um, she is now out of college, and she is a strength and conditioning coach for athletes, wrestlers, MMA is her main focus. Obviously, she can train anyone. Yeah. Uh, but that's kind of her focus. And she asked to come back on the show now that she's built her career to uh, let everyone know. So first of all, how are you? How have you been? Good, good. Um, definitely enjoying this time still that we get with COVID and everything. Like that's, everyone obviously is experiencing it differently, but I think it's actually helped um, me and my family definitely like um able to branch out more and especially with online um training is just like booming like if this happened anytime when the internet wasn't a thing like I don't think it would have been as great as it has been so yeah so for you <laughs> the COVID has been good yeah definitely I mean there's been things that's obviously sucked some but <laughs> yeah. I mean that's that's kind of what you experience when you're dealing with a pandemic <laughs> <laughs> yeah um uh, we obviously want to see um see better things right yeah, better yeah. Days. and I know that um you know coaches are giving me a call and wanting to come on to talk about how their uh their gyms are getting opened and they're going to start doing training again so yeah uh, that's a good sign. Um, hopefully really good things come out of it so that uh, they can say, hey, wrestling still works and everybody can be confident and move forward, right? Yeah. I mean, it's happening with like UFC. I mean, granted, like that's fights and everything and you're having to kind of stay in a bubble and train. But I mean, if they can do it, I mean, you're punching people and exposing blood and everything. Like that's obviously not happening as much in wrestling so it's like why why can they be the only ones who are doing it yeah and I think um I agree and part of it too is you know like even the NBA bubble but you know they have they're obviously funded right better so they you know we send a kid to get a test it can take two weeks to come back you know yeah they get tested right there they get put into a room for 24 hours they come out they got the results everybody goes and fights right so um Hopefully we'll get to a point where people can, can be tested or at least we have a shot and like a flu shot and everything's good to go. But um, I'm glad that it's been working out for you. I'm glad that you're building your business. That's awesome. Kick ass. Yeah. And um, I'm just sharing you across the platform so that everybody can listen to you. Yeah. And uh, so let's talk about it. Strength and conditioning training for wrestling. Um, tell us about it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think, biggest thing with wrestling everybody thinks that it's just you're you're trying to get a strong like there's things obviously that um some high school I'm sure but definitely it's you get to college and like you're really just experiencing like true wrestling and conditioning training and conditioning like there for the first time and I was fortunate enough that my dad was my coach when I was growing up and he had fitness background and wrestle, did judo and everything. So he kind of just brought me into that. And what I realized, even when I was younger, not so much in college, because like I said, everyone kind of had that ability with strength and conditioning. But when I was younger, um, when everyone was starting to cut weight, like you're, a lot of people were just cutting weight. And that was just what they were focusing on. And they were just wanting to get down, not really caring about like, how strong they were, what they were feeling like. It was just like, I just need to make that number hit on the scale and then I'll shove my face with food and I'll be good to wrestle. 
And I mean, the difference that I felt, I mean, granted, obviously, yes, cutting weight sucks no matter what area position that you're in. But what I realized is making sure that one, how you're cutting weight and then what you're doing on top of that with being conditioning and strength training and just obviously the mental aspect of it too is just a completely different ball game when it comes to stepping up onto the mat. Awesome. And I know that, um, uh, talk a little bit about what the benefits are of, you know, strength and conditioning, but also having a, a really good coach that, that can put a program together for you, not just in person with you, but yeah, somebody that can put a program together for you while you're at home. So a lot of these kids and a lot of these athletes right now are home. So, uh, you need to be able to put something together for them virtually as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, obviously, like you said, it's still, we're still trying to figure out how to get tournaments happening. I mean, like, obviously like maybe some bigger tournaments are happening, but even local tournaments are still trying to figure out how it's going. So like right now is the best time to like get your baseline set with it being strength and conditioning. Um, I mean, you don't want to get back out onto the mat, get back out onto the first tournament and you're just like your gas strength is down everything like that I mean especially here in Florida with gyms still opening back up like you can even get into a gym but I mean in other places there's some gyms might not be opening people still might not feel comfortable going to there so I mean there's still especially with wrestling like there's so much that you can do at home like in your living room for example whatever I mean especially like you can do drills, you can do like even body weight stuff and having a coach who knows like, okay, programming and um, going and purization training and knowing like where you're at and where you need to be. It's a lot more scientific than a lot of people think than just like, okay, uh, let's do maybe three sets of 10 squats and all right, cool. Good job <laughs> on the next thing. Yeah. No, a little bit more. And, and I'd imagine you'd have to, um, as a coach, I'm guessing you would have to understand your, your athlete as well. I'm sure you've got questions, um, decide what direction they want to go, what weight is comfortable for them. How are we going to get them there? Lean yeah. muscle, mass muscle, all that crazy stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, like, there's, like, in-season training, post-season training, pre-season training, and the <clears throat> sets and the reps and even, like, the actual exercises themselves are completely different. So, like, right now, I mean, you're trying to get as big, as strong, as fast, as conditioned as we can because, I mean, like I said, there's – really no tournaments happening so what what are you putting yourself well my <laughs> what are you like putting yourself um into right now to um like get yourself set up sorry <laughs> the dog's got you all messed up i know <laughs> uh, yeah perfect and that makes sense i know that um you know, they were telling my son during the season, they were, they had him on a plan. And then during the off season, he texts with his coaches and stuff and they have him on a plan. And right. it's, it's kind of different. I think they had him booking up and now they have him doing kind of some, uh, some meal planning, cutting out some fatty meat now at this point, because we're kind of on that downturn. So hopefully if, if wrestling happens now, built the mass, I have no idea how it works, but it, I look <laughs> at him and I see that he's bigger and it's working. So Right. Yeah. Like, All right. Have at it. So I even know he tells me stuff he's doing. I'm like, what is that? All right. Um, well, I know a lot of kids um, in wrestling and it's, it's kind of like the elephant in the room is the whole weight cutting thing. Uh, I know there's pros to it, cons to it. There's kids that maybe are trying to get down too low or, 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 or kids that should just stay the weight they are. But um, I know there's a lot of pros and cons to that. What, um, what would you tell kids out there right now that are that are doing that what are the pros and cons in that and how would you 
if you were their trainer, what would you do to help them? Yeah. Um, so looking back on at least, so for me, for example, um, when I, I started cutting weight when I was 12 and it, as a female, it, I probably did more harm than good. Honestly. I mean, I would cut 20, 30 pounds and I mean, I, probably could have been a lot stronger, been a lot taller, been a lot faster than if I would have just like not gone down two, three weight classes, maybe have just gone down one from where I am walking around at. And it's not just that, okay, can you mentally um, deal with the cut? Cause that's one thing. I mean, if you do it long enough, you can just get in your own head and you're fine. But it's the fact of, like I was saying, if you're stepping out on the mat, even after you get on the scale, you eat, you recover, and you still feel like crap, like, what, what's the point of that? I mean, you're, you think, oh, if I walk around at 150 pounds, and I'm wrestling at 115 pounds, 120 pounds, oh, I'll be bigger, stronger than all the other people. You might be, but like they are just at that point, they're mentally stronger and they're not as physically beaten down. So if you're wanting to cut weight, I would say like water intake is honestly probably the biggest thing and not that many coaches, at least when I was wrestling high school, college, really paid attention to that. They were just like, okay, throw on a sauna suit, throw on some long pants, long shirts, wrestle and run and just try and drop water like that not eat as much and just do whatever you can to really make the weight and you're fine with that and that what I realized is not the right thing to do I mean you need to fuel your body with the right food and you need to fuel your body with the right water and I mean you can still work out and train and be strong when you step out on the mat, even if you're cutting weight. Cool. So, um, you know, some of the younger kids, so the old, in the old days, you know, they would tell us you can't start lifting weights till you're 16 because stunt your growth, cause growth plate issues, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Now you see a lot of kids, man, I see videos, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old kids already pounding the weights. Yep. Um, so strength and conditioning at, at all ages, healthy, not healthy, do it, don't do it. Is it controllable? Yeah, I would say totally healthy. I mean, the biggest thing, even if you're high school, middle school, whatever, and you're still trying to lift weights for the first time, it doesn't matter really how old you are it really just needs to matter like on your form. And that's where like having a coach and having somebody who knows what they're doing is so beneficial. Because if, like I said, if you just kind of get underneath the squat rack and hit some squats and your knees are caving in and your ankles are rolling and your back is all hunched over and you're like, yes, I'm doing it. Awesome. You're like, no, that's, that's where the harm will come. And if you're, starting kids out, like you said, at 10 years old, and you're making sure that their foundation is strong and their form is good. I mean, obviously you don't want to put 300 pounds on a 10 year old. Like they're not going to obviously be able to lift that, but there's there's gotta be limitations at, at those younger ages. Right. Um, I mean, I, I believe so in a sense, like you obviously don't want to be one rep maxing when you're 10, But I mean, getting underneath a squat bar and even maybe lifting your body weight or more depending on how your form is, I believe is completely fine. I mean, I started lifting weights when I was 10, 11 years old. And I think, like I said, that is one reason why when I was younger, I felt a lot stronger out on the mat compared to other kids who might have not been in the gym lifting weights. And I go back to, it's just making sure that you have the right form, you have the right stability, especially wrestling, you're needing to 
be in a good stance, be in a good like form and everything too. So it just, it goes back to how we are in everyday lives and in the gym and everything. Now I know at, at every age, it's good to do calisthenics, but would you, at the younger ages, would you focus kids more on push-ups, sit-ups, pull-ups, jump rope, stuff like that? Or would you, would you be someone that would gear them only towards weights? Yeah. So, I mean, I would definitely start off younger kids at their, the calisthenics, like I said, getting that good form. And once they have a good push-up or good squat or good jump rope or sit up or whatever, then I mean, and add an exercise, add an, add an exercise. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I always, I go back to squats cause it's the easiest example. Um, everyone can kind of comprehend and understand everything, but it's making sure that you have a good squat form first body weight feet are in the right alignment, knees, ankles, toes are in the right alignment, chest, everything like that. And then add a dumbbell and do dumbbell squats and then add uh, just a bar and have them feel comfortable underneath the bar and having to hold the bar there and everything. And then slowly adding some weights onto that. But I mean, when I work with kids, 10, 11, maybe even 12 years old, from going from body weight calisthenic squats to up underneath the bar and weight on there is anywhere from four to six weeks because they're just still trying to understand how their body moves as it is. Yeah, and they're still growing. So that's where the harm can be done because they're doing things improperly years, a few years down the road, you're going to start to feel it. Right. And, um, yeah, and I don't, I don't think, um, yeah, cool. Uh, so, uh, you know, all right, so I'm, I'm a kid out there. I'm a parent. I'm watching this. I'm a team. I'm a club. I'm whatever. I'm in wrestling. I'm in MMA. Yeah. And, and I want to hire Coach Shepherd. How do I do it? Yeah. Um, so I do, obviously, I'm in the Orlando area. So I do strength and conditioning programs for co like coaches, teams as it is. I'll do just writing programs here. Here you go. Um, kids know how to do it. I do that more high school, college age, just because at that point they kind of know their form and everything. But I also, I come in person, um, school gyms, other gyms, home gyms. Um, I also do Zoom training, obviously right now with the world that we're in, like Zoom is just amazing as it yeah. is. Um, so even like people out of city out of state like I've been doing a lot of training with that as well and it's not even like you said not even just wrestling and MMA um but I mean if people are interested they can email me they can direct message me um and will you um when we get off uh you know my you know my page right on Facebook yeah. just go into the comments and put how people can get in touch with you put a link there and, and yeah, you don't have to be local to hire her. No. Uh, I think most strength and conditioning trainers right now are putting, you know, four week plans together for their, uh, for their athletes. I know that's what they do with Daniel. Uh, yeah. And uh, he goes out in the garage and, <clears throat> and does it. And the good thing is, is, and I, I'm sure you would say this, you're going to ask, Hey, what do you have at home? Yeah. That, that can facilitate like it do you have a bench or, or do you have dumbbells do you have a tire jump ropes uh bands what are we working with here and then you'll design something that works for you for the items you have access to at the house so don't worry about oh i'm not going to call i don't have anything anyway yeah. you have stuff in your house that'll work and she can you know i mean it could be a jug of water yeah literally like even if you like i always tell people like you have, you have your own body, like that in itself can be an amazing workout. And then even if, like you said, if you don't have any sort of actual equipment, you have a jug of water, you have a can of food, you have a couch that you can do like step ups and like jumps on and stuff like that. So, I mean, 
that's one big thing that I realized, especially during this pandemic with gyms not being open or people not wanting to go to gyms, at home workouts have been huge. So that's one thing I always ask. And then obviously, if you're talking to wrestlers, you'll have no doubt some sort of bump, bruise, injury and everything. So working around that is huge for me and not just working around it so we don't hurt it, but working around it. So one, we don't hurt it, but two, we make sure that it's getting stronger and that you're not going to be dealing with that for hopefully much longer. It's like the story. I have a rib that pops in and out when I wrestle. I have a shoulder that pops in and out. Yep, yep. Everything happens. Um, oh, Brittany Bowman, thanks for all the great info. I have an almost 10 year old female wrestler going into her fourth season and these ideas will help a lot since there has been a lot of sitting happening in these recent months. So look at that. You got to thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, you um, if you need any advice, hit her up. Yeah. Definitely. Um, advice is free, but if you want, you can hire her as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so cool. So I got my 10 questions. You ready? Awesome. All right. And I tried to gear it around our conversation. So uh, deadlifts or barbell rollouts? Jeez. Um, deadlifts. Barbell right. rollouts just suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aerobic endurance or anaerobic endurance? I like anaerobic just because cardio sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously you need both. So yeah. Awesome. Uh, Wide pull-ups or neutral pull-ups? Wide, 100% wide. I mean, you're going to be getting so much more emphasis on your back muscles with wide, so wide all the way. All right. Speed endurance or strength and power endurance? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I would say depends on who you're talking to, what you're wanting to do. But personally, for me, I would say strength and power. Um, and wrestling, I would probably say strength and power too, as well. Awesome. All right. Iso row or iso chest press? I would do row. I, I don't like chest press. I, I don't like chest <laughs> uh, Bicycle or stair step? Oh, stairs. All right. Split squat or front squat? Front. Front awesome. uh, Sprints or long distance runs? God. Can I say neither? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, there's no rules to the game, right? I, I, uh, I guess sprints if I had to choose. I don't like running. Yeah. <laughs> running makes me think of cutting weight, and I don't like cutting weight. <laughs> All right, I like it. All right, skull crushers or hammer curls? Um, say skull crushers. All right, jumping or circuit training? I mean, jumping rope or circuit training? Mm. You're, like, you're like jumping, what the hell's that? <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'd say, I'd say circuit training. Awesome. So you like what I did there? Yeah. I was, that made me think. I was, I was uh, surprised. Katie is the best female to have done it in Florida. If not for women like her, there may not be where it is today. Coach Cerullo. Oh, uh, what is up? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Coach Cerullo. What up, dog? All right, that's awesome. Well, this has been fun, huh? Yes, definitely. I like it. Come back anytime. We're yeah. on number two, so yes, many more to come. And, yeah, thank uh, you so much for having me. For sure, for sure. I'll let you, so your husband doesn't have to army crawl around the house anymore. With <laughs> I'll let you get back to him. Um, right. Thank you and good luck, and, and you know, I hope you get some good feedback from it, and feel free yeah. to share it, and please jump on and put in the comments how to get in touch with me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. Take care. Awesome. Have a good one.